So it says, what is the equation written in vertex form of this parabola given the vertex? So when I said a little bit ago there's a key word in here, it was given twice, and that's vertex. So anytime we're given ver the vertex, we should write the equation in vertex form. Even if it doesn't tell us to do that, it's probably the better option. So what is vertex form? Hey, go ahead. Good. So, keeping in mind that the thing, the three things that we need in order to write this equation, we need to find A, H, and K. Once we have those, we can plug them back in to find what the equation is for this parabola. To find that, right now, we're given H and K and an x and an f of x, or a y. So we're given four things that we can plug in, and then we'll have to solve for a, the one that we don't know yet. So f of x is 7, x is also 7, h is 9, and k is negative 1. So we need to go fill out everything around this, so we don't know a, and then the minus is part of the equation, so it needs to go in there. And of course our squared as well. So from here we just get A by itself. And so 7 minus 9 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. So this becomes 4A minus 1. We want to get this A by itself. So we're going to add 1. And we'll get 8. Then a dividing by 4, a gives 2. So a is 2. So remember from here, now that we know a, we go plug it as well as h and k back into our equation, our vertex form. So f of x equals 2 times x minus 9 minus 1. Okay. How'd that go? And just as a reminder, that in our notes, on the blue pages, the blue notes, uh, it was past this stuff, and that was all our key features. Write an equation in vertex form from the vertex and a point. So, because I try to title this, the sections of our notes so where you can find it based on the problem, like the description of the problem. So hopefully you found that. And, it reminded you a little bit. All right, and then let's review graphing. Nope, not that. Let's review graphing this. So we need a couple important points. And what are those? Let's start this graph. We need a couple important points. We need the axis of symmetry, and we need to know the graphing pattern, probably. Right? So, right 9 down. Awesome. Yep, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, down 1. So start with the vertex, always. And did we, I don't think we put that on vertex form, I don't think we did. Uh, we did say where the vertex is and the axis of symmetry, but we didn't specifically talk about graphing. Anyway, which way does this open up? Oh. <laughs> okay, so which way does this open? All right, good. And so our axis of symmetry goes straight through the vertex, and that that's a line of reflection that we can put a point and just reflect it across, which is why it's kind of handy. And remember, its equation is what? We did write it, and I just flashed it up here a second ago. What's its equation for this one? Look on your notes, guys, if you don't know. And if you do know, you should say it. What's the equation for the axis of symmetry? In vertex form. Right, but we have to write it as an equation, right? Not text. Yeah. 
So x equals 9. That's the axis of symmetry. So x equals 9. Okay, we know this is opening up, and that a is 2. So what is our graphing pattern? It will be over 1 and up 2. Good. Over 1 and up 2. And so my graph would put that there. I'm just going to reflect it across instead of re re do the pattern. Okay, how about over 2? What would happen next? Up 4. That's the normal. Oh, wait. Up 8, right? Because it's twice as big. So over 2, up 8, somewhere up here probably. And connect it rounded. Good. How do we find the y-intercept for vertex 1? Yeah, set the whole function equal to zero. Go ahead and do that for me. I'm going to wait for about one minute. So to find the y-intercept, like Kara said, we need to set the whole function equal to zero. And then just solve for uh, the y-value. So 2 and then x minus 9 squared minus 1. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to solve for the x. Uh, sorry, we're doing this wrong. I have this backwards. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, we need the y value, not the x. So we keep the y, set the x equal to 0. Yeah. And then we'll get negative 9 squared minus 1. And this is why I didn't use it to graph. You can probably tell it's going to be pretty big. Um, negative 9 squared is 81. So 2 times 81 is 162. Huh? And minus 1 is 161. So our y-intercept, if we graphed it, it would be way, way up there. And you can see that because this is shifted to the right so far, it would take a long time for the left arm of that graph to get over to the y-axis. And so the y-intercept is not always a good point to use, and that's why you need your graphing pattern, okay? How many of you got the y-intercept? Okay. I do need to add and remind you that this should be given as a point. So 0, 161. So good. Good review of vertex form. Let's look at the other review that you did. The first three problems were exactly what we just did, other than it didn't ask you to graph. So it was exactly the same. And then uh, the second one. So if you, did, if you didn't do it, please at least grab it out. Again, we're given the vertex and a point, so that's the same as the warm-up. And I'll show you the answers in a second. Can I have that? Yeah. Then the second one, what form are those ones in? The second section. What form? That's standard, yeah. So how do we find the vertex in standard form? Because there's no H and K, right? What? Awesome. Yeah, good job. So X equals opposite of B or negative B over 2A. And then Y equals F of negative B over 2A gives you your vertex. Um, when we're doing a word problem, what is the vertex called? Let's say we threw something or dropped something or kicked or whatever. Or maybe it's like we've done some of the money problems. Or, yeah, it's called a maximum or minimum, right? So when we're in context or in a word problem, that vertex has the meaning of, an, of a maximum or minimum. Okay. Uh, I, like I said, I'll come back and show you answers. I just want to talk through a quick review. Uh, these ones, what form is number four in? Standard form. So vertex, again, negative b over 2a and f of negative b over 2a. Axis of symmetry is x equals what? Yeah. 
It's negative b over 2a. It goes directly through the x-coordinate of the vertex. How about the y-intercept? We don't. We can just calculate it right now. Yeah, it's 0, 19. So in standard form, remember c is the, is the y-intercept. Okay, and then we need to sketch this graph. Um, but let's just, I'll show you in a minute so you can check. How about doing these kind with three points? Not specifically told that one of them is the vertex. How do we do that? Don't we start with two? Start with two, what do you mean? <clears throat> two of the points. Okay, so do what? Um, you do it like you would do for the last one. What's the last one? Like, what we did on only four. Oh. Well, actually, no, because we don't, like, we don't know. I mean, we could graph this, but think about these three points could be like that, right? And we don't know if it's going that way or if it's going that way. So this is where we need to use the calculator. Or you could set up a system of three equations and solve by hand, but this is where we use the stat edit function on the calculator, right? Stat, edit, enter these three points. Stat, calc, five, quadratic re regression. And you're good, okay? Good, do you remember that? Mm -hmm. Okay, and then I, I think I'll come back and do the word, first word problem here in a second. So let me show you the answers. So number seven, I said to do one from each section, or the first one specifically. Number seven, y equals five times x minus 3 squared minus 2. So a, a, I can't write on this, but a is 5, is what you should have solved for. 5 times x minus 3 squared minus 2. Okay? First one in the next section, the vertex is at negative 3, 5. So that again was negative b. So negative 18 over 6, which would make negative 3. Plug negative 3 in here and you'll get 5. Good to have that calculator, right? Okay. I will tell you that on the quiz, this kind of thing will not be, you, you won't be able to use your graphing calculator, just a regular one, okay, if you need it. All right, number four, next section. So vertex four, three. Axis of symmetry is x equals 4. Don't forget to write it as an equation, x equals 4. We already did the y-intercept. And then um, it says point symmetric to the y-axis is 8, 19. All that's saying is take your, your y-intercept and reflect it over your axis of symmetry. And that gives you a second point. So this key, they only graphed three points. But what would the graphing pattern be for number 4 if I asked you to fill in a couple other points? You have it on your sheet too. Number four, what's the graphing pattern for y equals x squared minus 8x plus 19? If I go over one, up one, right? It's one squared. Over two, up. 2 squared is 4. Why are we not multiplying by 2 or a half or anything? Because there's not a number that's in front. So Good. We just a is 1, yep. So <coughs> it's just it's the normal or regular. Okay, next one. So number 7, the equation should have been f of x or y equals x squared minus 7x plus 5. x squared minus 7x plus 5. And then let's go do this, um, I guess would be called number nine or whatever, this first word problem. I just want to remind you of some things on that. How did those first ones go though? So there were four of them. Hold up how many you got correct out of four. Yeah, basically, this whole side didn't really do, you did, uh, you, but didn't do your homework. You guys need to do that, okay? So make sure tonight to do it. Riley, you guys get, get the other ones done. This sounds pretty funny, I think, right at the beginning. 
you jumped off the cliff, right? Anybody ever gone cliff diving someplace? You have, or? I don't know where it's going to go Oh. Oh, is it? I wonder if it's left hand. Um, is, did you jump into a creek with the rocks all around? Yeah. But a big pool, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Um, I did a lot. I mean, the last time I did it, I hurt myself. And so, I have done it since. Interesting story. Do you know what I'm talking about, since you're a moab? Um, there's a creek called Mill Creek, and then there's two, it branches into two. Anyway, it's, you hike up there. It's not too far outside of town, and it's a pretty cool area with lots of red rocks, sandstone. Huh? Where, what? Oh, yeah? It's like Okay, maybe I'm talking about that. It's a popular jumping hole. I don't know. It's like hitting. You have to, like, climb down. Yeah. So kids and adults do jump. And it's pretty far down. But it's pretty popular and pretty. Huh? No, because I'm not a verse picker like that. But interesting story, my, my grandpa, growing up, my grandpa... Um, owned an explosives company and like a fairly big one and they kept having kids get injured at the spot so they went and him and another guy went and blasted it out so it was deeper and safer for them to jump in yeah now it's a super popular spot anyway so you've done it anybody else yeah well now i've told you that i wouldn't do it <laughs> Where'd you go? Sandy Hollow. Sandy Hollow? Yeah, I don't know. It's from a lake. Now, I've been about like you to try it out. Oh, where is that? Somewhere in Utah. Okay. I haven't heard of that one. Interesting. But Sandy Hollow doesn't sound very wet. <laughs> so we're given, here's our equation. And why is that 16 there? The first one? The negative 16, why is it in the equation? Gravity, because as you fling yourself off this cliff, your body is acting like a projectile, which is being acted upon by gravity, right? So it's pulling it down. Good. How long did it take for Jason to reach his maximum height? What is that asking for? Thank you. The seconds to the max, right? And that is what mathematical point? The... The... Guys, max, in context, we just got done saying this a few minutes ago, is called the what? In math. The vertex. So here's, here's this guy, Jason, jumping off his cliff. Right? It very much follows what it would look like on a graph, actually, on a calculator. Okay, so he jumped off, and it says how long did it take for him to reach his max. So T for the max, the time at the maximum, would be negative 16 over 2 times negative 16, which is just 1. So it took him one second to get there. And then it says what was the highest point he reached? What is that asking for? The Y, or the, the F of X coordinate of the maximum. So H max is h of 1, which looks like negative 16 times 1 squared, plus 16 times 1, plus 480. So we get negative 16 plus 16, which just goes to 0. And so his, I work I write this? I'll just continue right here. He actually started at his maximum. Do you see that? So how should I address the graph? Um, so you start at your max. Yeah, a second ago I had it kind of like that. But that's not... Now that we know... It that, should be kind of straight a little bit. And then go down. Yeah, just kind of... Back. Okay. Now, what is very unrealistic about this? Yeah, 
I guess it doesn't say that. Um, it never says, did Jason live? <laughs> Maybe we should start adding that to our... So his y-interceptor is initial height when everything is zero, right? Time is zero, time is zero. All that goes away, his initial height means where did he start from? And that was 480 feet. So the graph looks more like just down instead of up first. But, yeah, if there was a D that says, did Jason live to tell about it, you would say, heck no. This is jumping off of, like, a Denver-sized building, right? So, no, he didn't tip. How'd that one go, those of you who did it? Give me a, well, there's three questions. Show me how many you got right if you did it. You're not holding up. Like, you didn't do it. Oh, that's right. I, I remember now. Okay. Okay. Going back to last Friday's work, we finished up page 7, and then you guys, most of the rest of the period, you worked on page 8 in the packet. And so, and then we checked them. I don't have it on this screen, but we checked those answers to page 8 in the packet. And how do you feel like that went for you? Just plain factor. Doing okay with it? The star method, GCF factoring, etc. Okay. Um, do you guys have page nine in your packet? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So flip to that, and I'm just going to pick two problems as a quick check in to give you a chance to work. And you can ignore this writing over here. Um, we we uh, are doing the star instead of that. So let's do the second one. And let's do, I don't know, let's do the last one, I guess. So second and last. And I'll give you about, let's take five minutes, two and a half minutes each. All right, so this first one does not have a GCF. Remember to check that first. Always check for a GCF. So A and C make, or A times C make negative 120, so 6 times negative 20. A is 6, and B is 19. So we're looking for factors of 120, negative, but 120 that can add up to 19. So this 120 has quite a few, and here's some strategy. It, I said if you ever get stuck, you can start by writing 1, 2, etc. But sometimes you know that it's probably not going to be the 1, because 1 and 120 are so far apart, the only thing that we're going to make is a really big number, like 119 or 121. So you can kick that out as a way of shortening your work. Same with 2 and 60, 3 and 40. So obviously our, what I'm saying is our numbers need to be closer together, right? So anyway, 4 and 30, uh, 5 and 24. Oh, hey, look, that one works, okay? And so we need negative 120, but positive 19. So the 24 needs to be positive and the 5 negative. Okay, then our next step in our process is making sure everything's reduced if possible. This one doesn't reduce. The right side can't reduce. So it's ready. This side can though. What goes into both 6 and 24? What's the biggest thing that goes into both 6 and 24? 6 does, right? So we get 6 divided by 6. And maybe this time I'll write it on here and 24 divided by 6, so we get 1 and 4. So our factors now become 6x minus 5 and x plus 4. Guys, it's a good idea to go check. 6x times x, there's our 6x squared. 24x minus 5x, there's our 19x, and then negative 20. So everything works good. How'd that one go? Sometimes those big numbers are a bit of a pain, yeah. so 120. So just keep 
you know, if you're not like getting there just mentally, just use your calculator and check numbers using some strategy. This one has a GCF of what? What is the biggest number that goes into all three? Good. Four. Remember also to look for a letter like we did yes or not yesterday but Friday. But this one doesn't have a letter, but always check for that. 4x squared minus 8x plus 3. So this is what we do start on. And then bring the 4 down when we get to the end. I'm going to do it down here. Okay. So A times C is 12. B is negative 8. And then A is 4. So factors of negative, or excuse me, positive 12 that add to negative 8 should be negative 6 and negative 2. And then both sides on this one reduce. So what goes into both 4 and 6, the biggest number? 2. 2. So divide both by 2, and we'll get 2 and negative 3. Over here, same thing, divide by 2, and we'll get 2 and negative 1. So we get 2x minus 3 from the left, 2x minus 1 from the right, and positive 4 out front. Don't forget that. Alright, that's a quick review of factoring. Feeling okay with it? Okay. Um, I'll be honest that the problems between page 8 and, and 9, this page, the problems that we're going to do that we're doing with factoring don't get much harder than that, if any. Okay? So if you're doing okay with these, you should be doing okay with it, all factoring. As long as you're making sure uh, to pull out the GCF. If you could please flip back over to page 8 real quick. Sorry, page 7 real quick. And look at the last two. So the last two, remember, we had to pull out 4u and 6y. So just make sure you're looking for those letter factors. Cool. All right, let's uh, flip now to solving quadratics. In your packet, it will be after page 9, but I think it's like page 18 or something. 17, okay. All right. So solving, what does that even mean? So our goal here is to be able to explain what solving a quadratic means, but also be able to do it. Uh, we're not going to talk about quadratic formula till later, so this is just solving by factoring. What does it mean to solve a quadratic? Anybody know? Do you guys remember what it meant to solve a linear? So back, think back to unit one. And we did lots of solving in unit one, where we had two equations, we had three equations, we had just lines of fractions, stuff. We were solving and solving. They were all linear. What did we actually look for in those? I'll give you a hint. What were we looking for? Point of intersection, right? So if we graphed and found a solution that way, it was looking for a point where two lines cross. This is kind of different. But we are still looking where this parabola crosses something. It's just not a line. So um, in your notes, grab your blue notes. Uh, so four quadratics. <coughs> You don't need to draw this yet, I'll write with you on your notes, but I'm just going to sketch a parabola. Let's say we have something, let's make it be like something was kicked, okay? So something was kicked. Flies up, comes down. The, the mathematical parabola would have arrows on the end going on forever. In context, though, we know it would end at this horizontal green line called the grass, right? So when we're solving a quadratic, we're finding these points where the parabola crosses the x-axis. That's the idea, okay? The big idea is where does the parabola cross the x-axis? So 
If it's like this, we'll have two solutions. If it's one that just touches the x-axis like that, we'll have one solution. So one, two, and if it's one like this that never touches or crosses, we will have zero solution, zero real solution, okay? And this all relates to factored form because factored form tells us the two zeros. And we're going to talk about that, like I said, tomorrow. So in your notes, let me get up to the end of the group here. Let's go write about what this all means. So it means finding the x-intercepts, which we are going to start calling the zeros. Why? Yeah, that's exactly why. Where the y equals zero, okay? And we will also at times call these roots. So we'll say AKA are also known as roots. Because by the time we're done with this unit, we'll be, and next, we'll be calling these zeros, roots, x-intercepts, solutions. We'll have all four different names referring to the same thing, which is where does this cross the x-axis? Where is the y value zero? Let's draw a little sketch, like I said, and just sketch some parabola and highlight the two points where it crosses the x-axis and say two solutions and do another one. And just highlight one point, one solution, and then do the no solutions case. Oops. There is a way, and we'll learn this later, that you can figure that out pretty quickly, but we're not talking about it just yet. We will have four to five different methods of solving by the end of the unit. This is just the first of them. Probably four, I'll say four different methods. We've talked about another one briefly, was where we, in vertex form, do you remember how we square rooted? We got everything like moved over and then square rooted. That was the first one, technically. Okay, we'll talk about a process here in a minute. But look on your sheet. On your work packet sheet. Do you see how the, on page, what did you say it was, 17? Yes. Do you see how every one of those is set equal to zero? Yes. Okay, that's because of this. That's because of what we just wrote, which is to solve a quadratic, we want to set it equal to zero. And... I don't want you to get in the habit of just saying zero. You might have to move some stuff around, okay? These ones are already factored. So you can hopefully you look at this and see that they're already into the two binomial factors. But that's kind of baby steps. Eventually, you'll have to do the factoring in order to solve, okay? So here's how this will work. Again, we'll go back and write down the process. But first, it was set equal to zero, which... This one has been done for you that way. Then we factor. This one has also had that done, okay? Once you get to the factored part, so the step where you're done factoring, notice that we have two things, and they multiply to make zero. So I'm going to read over here to this top left. 
there's a product or there's a property called the zero product property. This is on your white worksheet thing. It says this, if two things multiply to make zero, then one of them has to be zero. Maybe both, but for sure one, right? It says on here, either A is zero or B or both. So pause and let that sink in. If I tell you that two things are multiplied, I'm thinking of two numbers in my head and they multiply to make zero. Something zero, right? Has to be. That's all that says. It has this zero product property name, but that's all it says, which that's this right here. Basically, the first thing you could think of as A, the second thing you could think of as B, and they are being multiplied together and they make zero, which means one or, or both of them is zero, okay? That's where this whole concept is based off. So our process is to figure out where this one is zero. What value of x makes that left factor zero? You can solve it in your head. What value of x makes this left, left factor zero? Negative one, right? Negative one plus one equals zero. So that's, that would be one of our answers because negative one would make the left factor zero. And then how about this other one? Positive 4, right? 4 minus 4 would make this one 0, and that would make the whole thing 0. So the way we're going to do that, it's kind of like when we solved absolute value. We're going to split it up into the two cases, where we want to know where each of the two factors becomes 0. So we'll split it up into the two. And then we just solve. They're usually pretty easy little solves. So subtract 1, and you get x equals negative 1. So that would be one of our zeros, roots, solutions, x-intercepts, right? It's at negative 1. The other one, add 4, and we'll get x equals 4. That's our other x-intercept, okay? So opening up, this thing opens up, a is 1. And we'll talk through the form tomorrow, but negative 1 and positive 4 are the two solutions, roots, zeros, x-intercepts, whichever word that we're using. Okay? So, it's not probably going to take you too long. Once you get it factored, it's probably not going to take too long to see the zeros. So let's write about this process, solving quadratics by factoring. say set. I'm going to say get. Get the function equal to zero. I'm saying get and not set because sometimes you have to move stuff like subtract from one side. So here's a couple cautions or reminders maybe. Sometimes you need to move terms to get zero. And then as part of that as well, you want to keep x squared positive. It's not that you can't do it if x squared is negative, but it makes it harder or more prone to mistakes, let's maybe say it that way. Alright, so we've set this thing equal to zero, or gotten it equal to zero if we had to move stuff around. And step two, we're going to factor completely. Completely is there to completely is there to imply don't just GCF, 
but don't forget your GCF, don't partially factor, etc. And again, under here, let's do a reminder, don't forget the GCF, if possible. Okay, so we have factored, we have set equal to zero, and now we're where your packet starts. Okay, that's where we, where these two steps have gotten. So now you're going to set each factor equal to zero. Um, and that's the zero product property. So set each factor to zero. A big caution here that students mess up is to forget doing the GCF. So we're going to write including the GCF. So set each factor including the GCF equal to zero. And here's how I'm going to word the next part. I'm going to say solve the mini equations for x. Okay? And we are going to actually put an example in here today for this. Actually, um, look back just for a second at this star, me star method example. So we factored it. Here it is. So star method example, we factored it to this. Okay. We're, we're going to use that to solve. So that way we don't have to do the factoring part. And you can just reference in your, in your notes. Okay. So this is a reason to take good notes. So put C star method note for the factor. Right, so it's 3x squared, 3x squared plus 8x plus 5. Okay, that's what we are given. Now if I say solve this or find the zeros, let's say it that way. Step one, set equal to zero. So set equal to zero. That's step one. Okay, step two, factor. And if you look back on your notes from the star method, we already factored this, like I said. So this becomes, uh, what was it, 3x plus 5 and x plus 1. 3x plus 5 and x plus 1, that still equals 0, okay? Like all we did was rewrite it. We haven't done nothing else but rewrite it in a different form, okay? So it still equals 0. Okay, step 3 says set each factor equal to 0. We don't have a GCF in this case, that's fine. So step three, set each factor equal to zero. Um, like we did, like I said, with absolute value, I would draw the line down the middle and do each side. So this looks like three X plus five equals zero and X plus one equals zero. 
And then we wrote solve the mini equations for x. So step four, solve for x. Okay, so we're going to subtract five. And then we'll get 3x equals negative 5, and then divide by 3, and we'll get x equals negative 5 thirds. The other one, a little less work, x equals negative 1. So we have 2 zeros. This thing crosses the x-axis in two places, and we call those the zeros, the solutions, the x-intercepts. If I said graph this, now we have the y-intercept, the two x-intercepts, and we can do negative b over 2a and f of negative b over 2a to get the vertex. So now we have even more information to graph, right? And these will be or are, these are two of the most important points that we can graph. So, what do you think? Yeah, the factoring part, I'll, I'll just be like upfront about this, the factoring part is the harder part of solving. Okay? Once you get the thing factored, these, these things are almost always easy to solve. Okay? So, factoring and you guys already told me that that's going pretty well. So um, I'm happy about that. So on your sheet, all of these, again, these are already set equal to zero and factored. So why don't you, I don't even know if we need to do all of them. Sure, let's, let's uh, cut out this one. So cut off what would be the third one and this fifth one and do two, four, and six. Yeah, I want you to cross them out. Just do two, four, and six. So first one, again, it's each of these are a factor, the whole parenthesis, right? So it's something times something equals zero. And the somethings are the two parentheses groups. So we take each one equal to zero to figure out where that happens. Like where does it actually become zero? <clears throat> so we need to add two here, and then five n equals two, divide by five, and we'll get n equals two fifths. So if we graphed this parabola, at two-fifths, it would cross the x-axis, or 0.4. Okay, over here, add 1, and then 6n equals 1, divide by 6, and n equals 1 sixth. So at two-fifths and 1 sixth, these would, this parabola would cross the x-axis, which hopefully that tells you, if you think about how close those are, you know, if I space this out even a little, 1, 2, at two-fifths, and one sixth, our two x intercepts are like right next to each other, even on my graph it's hard to see, right? Which direction does that open, that first one? Do you see how if we multiplied these out, what would A be doing this? 5n times 6n? That's where A comes from. What is A? 30. 30 n squared. So this is extremely what? Stretched. Stretched. Because A is 30, right? So it's opening up very stretched. So our, our x-intercepts, I mean, this thing would look like almost a straight line on a graph. Like just a line. In it. Okay, next one. Same thing. Set 4p plus 3 equal to 0 and 4p minus 3 equal to 0. And <clears throat> when you solve these out, you'll get p equals negative 3 fourths and p equals positive 3 fourths. Same thing, but just different sign. All right, the last one is one that students miss, and I don't want you to do that, okay? So make sure that you're clear on this one. 
Do you see the two things being multiplied to, to make zero? Do you see two things? Okay? And that's why I think students get confused on this, because it's not as easy to see. But, like here, I have that thing times that thing. If I circled on this bottom one, if I circled the two things, I would circle 3p and then the parentheses. Those are the two things being multiplied. Okay, and that's why in our notes we just wrote this note with the big star including the GCF. That's one of our factors. So we need to set it like this. 3P equals 0. We need to set it equal to 0. And then on the other one, 10P plus 7 equal to 0. Okay, if I solve for this P, um, what do I need to do to get 3P equals 0 to just get P by itself? Divide three. Yeah, we just divide by 3, and we'll get P equal to 0. And then over here, of course, subtract 7, and P equals negative 7, and then divide by 10, and you'll get negative 7 tenths. Again, it's not that it's hard, it's just that people miss seeing it. But that 3P is one of the two things that make 0. It's one of our factors. And back last week, when I told you that the, a letter GCF is the most important, this is why, right here. Okay? All right, flip to the next page. Notice now these are all set, well, the first ones are set equal to zero, but not factored. I guess the first one is factored, it's the same. Uh, but the next two are not factored, you would need to factor those. And then how about down here? Uh, the third one from the bottom, let's just look at that one. How do we get that set, or get that equal to zero? Third one from the bottom. Our first step is to get it equal to zero. Say it again. No, nope, because that would make the 2y squared negative. Okay, so do this one with me, please. <clears throat> Look at our notes. says, this is this first step now. We, have, we don't even have it done. Get the function equal to 0. Sometimes you need to move terms. But keep x squared positive. Okay? That's pretty important. So on that one, rather than moving the 2y squared, Move the 13y and the 45. Okay, do this please if you're um, wanting an example. So, show it going on both sides. On the right, they cancel. On the left, it becomes 2y squared minus 13y minus 45. Now it's equal to 0. From there, what would you do next? What do your notes say to do next? Factor completely. So check for a GCF, and then factor into you know, your star method, and then set each factor to zero. So, uh, we get out, when do we get out? 11.03. Yeah, we have time. Um, I want you to finish that one, and I want you to do the second one, please. So finish the one we just started and do the second one. Okay, so this one is already set equal to zero, but not factored. So step two said factor completely, and you should factor this one to x plus four times x minus two, and that's still equal to zero. We just had to factor, right? And you did your star method, maybe you start it over here, negative eight, positive two, one and one, etc. Okay, and then from here we set each factor this part is no different than the other side, like the other page, I mean. And you should get negative 4 and positive 2. This one we do need to factor first. So our star, our star would be factors of negative 90 that add up to negative 13, and A is 2 um, for the 
rearranged function. So factors of negative 90 that add up to 13. I don't know what those are, 16, 18, thank you. 18 and 5 with the negative on the 18. So basically, let's reduce, we get 1 and negative 9. Basically, we do the same thing. Uh, can you finish that page for your homework, please? Just a few.